This video is going to focus on projectile motion, and in particular, kind of a classic physics type problem called a cliff problem. The way the problem reads is as follows. A bowling ball rolls off the end of a table with a velocity of 5 meters per second. The table is 2 meters off the ground. As the ball falls to the ground, um, we want to know A, uh, what is the range of the ball, and B, what is the final velocity of the ball. This video is going to be divided up into a couple of different things. We're going to review a little bit about some general terms in projectile motion, and in particular, these cliff problems. Then we're going to show you the work and how to work out this problem, and then there'll be the final answer at the end. If you'd rather not listen to the review part of this, and you'd like to go right to the practice problem, uh, you can select uh, this part of your screen, and it'll take you right to the problem. If you want to even skip the, the work and the problem being solved, and you want to go right to the answer, go ahead and click on Show Me the Answer. If you don't want to go right to the problem, if you don't want to go right to the answer, well then we're going to do a little review and that's what's coming uh, next. So here's our review. Uh, the projectile motion cliff problem uh, has a couple different characteristics that we need to make sure that we understand um, in order to solve this problem the right way. Uh, first of all, as the ball rolls off the table, uh, the velocity in the x direction, the velocity in the x direction stays constant. So this 5 meters per second as soon as the ball is rolled off the table, there's nothing else influencing the ball in the x direction. So it's going to stay consistent at 5 meters per second. The next thing that we need to make sure we understand is in the y direction, the velocity is going to have constant acceleration. That's due to gravity. As the ball follows this curved path, it's going to be accelerating because in the y direction, we know that gravity is pulling it down on Earth uh, right around 10 meters per second squared. So we're going to have constant acceleration in the y direction. The third thing we need to make sure we know is that in the y direction, as it's exiting the table, the initial velocity is going to be zero. That's going to really help us as we solve our problems here to be able to set that uh, VIY to zero. Then finally, and this is the one that's a little bit more complicated, is your final velocity. The velocity all the way uh, down here, right before it hits the ground, is VF. VF is going to be a combination or the resultant of the velocity in the x direction and the velocity in the y direction. And when you add those two components together you get your replacement vector which will be your final velocity because at this point you don't only have velocity in the x direction, you don't only have velocity in the y direction, you have velocity in the x and in the y direction. It's a combination all the way down here. And so in order to find out the final velocity, what it's really telling you to find out is the resultant of Vx, which is constant all the way through, and then the final velocity of y. And again, we need to use Vfy because Vy is accelerating as it comes down. So the initial velocity is zero, and the final velocity is going to be much different. Vx, we can just use as the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity because, as we said before, in the x direction, constant velocity is what we have. So the ball is just going to be going constantly in the x direction as far as its velocity is concerned. So those are some important things that we need right away. The other thing that we'll review are the equations. Uh, these are the x direction and y direction equations. These are basically your velocity and acceleration equations that uh, we've used probably, but they've been, they've been modified a bit to work uh, for projectiles and to work uh, with vectors. And so um, if you're not familiar with these, um, these are the ones that we're using. You can see that we have a G in here instead of A on these equations. That's one main difference. And the reason for that is because in all these cliff problems, the acceleration is really going to be little g, which is the acceleration due to gravity which we'll use 9.8 meters per second squared. So that's our review. Um, we've learned those constants and those uh, things from the previous page. We've, we've gone over our equations, and we should be on our way now. So as we start to solve the problem, we need to find out what we're given and what's being asked for. So here's a list of what we've been given. Vx, the velocity in the x direction, is 5 meters per second. That comes right out of the problem. Dy, which is going to be the distance, the distance in the y direction, that's going to be two meters. That came right out of the problem. 
what we learned uh, on a couple uh, slides before this, VIY, the initial velocity in the y direction, is going to be zero meters per second. There's not an initial velocity in the y direction. Little g, acceleration due to gravity on Earth is 9.8 meters per second squared. And then what is it asking? It's asking for the range of the ball, which is dx. That's going to be this distance right here. And vf, which is going to be the final velocity uh, as the ball reaches the bottom of its path. All right, well, let's do letter A first. Oh, before we get into letter A, this is a, a good reminder here. The first step that we always want to take in the cliff problems is whenever we can, we want to find the time as soon as we can. The time is really going to link our equations together, and it's really going to help us. So we always want to find the time the ball spent in the air as quickly as possible. So uh, in this case, how are we going to find the time in the air? Well, we have dy. We have a, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. So if we have both of those, dy and a, which in the equation is a little g, and we know that vi in the y direction is going to be uh, 0 meters per second, we can use our equation here. And once we start to fill it in, uh, we put 2 meters in for dy. This goes away because vi uh, is 0 uh, in the y direction. And then we have 1 half times 9.8 times t squared. Just doing the math on that, we get the square root of 2 over 0.5 times 9.8. And we have our time, 0.64 seconds. So we now know that the ball has been in the air for 0.64 seconds. Now, it didn't say in either A or B that we need to solve for the time in the air, um, but that's a really good tip for these problems. Always find the time in the air as quickly as you can, and that will make life easier for you. Now we can get to letter A. Letter A says, what is the range of the ball? That's really asking for uh, dx. So in order to find dx, uh, there's really only one equation that we have that has dx in it. It's vx equals dx over t. We have two out of three uh, variables right there, so that makes things pretty good for us. We put in 5 meters per second in for uh, vx, and then we have dx over 0.64 seconds. Uh, we can solve that pretty quickly uh, by multiplying 0.64 times 5, and you get 3.2 meters. So that's your distance in the x direction. So we know that the dx is going to be 3.2 meters. That would be the range or the distance in the x direction. All right, letter B, the final velocity. Now, remember what we said before. Uh, if you were watching the summary part uh, or the review part of this video, that the VF is not just the final velocity in the y direction. It's not just the final velocity in the x direction. It's the resultant of both of those. It's going to have a velocity in the x and the y, so we need to add those components together. Well, how are we going to do that? We know that Vx is 5 meters per second. That's what it says in the problem. That's what we determined right away because Vx is constant. All the way down here, the velocity in the x direction is going to be 5 meters per second. Now we need to find Vfy, the final velocity in the y direction. With what we're given, we know uh, we have an initial velocity in the y direction of 0. We know we have g of 9.8. We can use some uh, pretty simple fill-in-the-blanks on our equations here to get the Vfy. Here we go. Vf equals Vi plus gt. Okay, so, uh, and these are y direction equations. So, uh, more specifically, it would say Vfy equals Viy plus gt. And so, Vfy is equal to 0, the Viy is 0, plus 9.8 plus times, uh, rather, uh, 0.64, which is our time. So we have uh, the final velocity in the y direction uh, as 6.3 meters per second. That's what we would put in right here. So our uh, components now look like this. 6.4 uh, meters per second for the final velocity in the y, 5 meters per second for the velocity in the x. Now with uh, simple uh, math here, Pythagorean theorem, and SOHCAHTOA, we can find out our VF uh, value. There's our SOHCAHTOA, kind of skipping a couple steps there, but we would go 6.4 squared plus 5 squared equals uh, the resultant, or C squared. And then we would take the square root of both of those, and we get 8.12 meters per second. 
bend to find our um, angle here because remember every velocity is a vector quantity it needs a magnitude and a direction we have the tangent of the angle is equal to 6.4 divided by 5 the angle then is going to be the inverse tangent of 6.4 divided by 5 which gives us 52 degrees so we now know that our final velocity would be 8.12 meters per second at an angle of 52 degrees so here's our final answer a bowling ball rolls off the end of a table with a velocity of 5 meters per second. The table's 2 meters off the ground. We found the time first, which helped us quite a bit. Then we were able to get the range of the ball, which was uh, 3.2 meters. And then we were able to get the final velocity of the ball, which was 8.12 meters per second at 52 degrees.